We're going to explore the power of ChatGPT for keyword research. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use this cutting edge technology to discover new and exciting keywords that will help boost your SEO, content marketing efforts, and build up your OnlyFans revenue. Wait, that is the other script. But if you're not familiar with ChatGPT, it's an AI language model that generates human-like responses to text prompts. It's like a chatbot, you know? It's been trained on a vast amount of internet text, which means it can understand context and generate responses that are relevant and useful. When it comes to SEO and content marketing, ChatGPT can be a powerful tool for discovering keywords that you may not have thought of before. By understanding the intent behind user queries, generating related keywords, ChatGPT can help you optimize your content and get more traffic to your website. In this video, we're going to explore a step-by-step -step guide on how to use ChatGPT for keyword research. We'll look at generating seed keywords, refining those keywords, what to do with the keywords, and then tracking the results. Now, you're not going to be doing all of that with ChatGPT, but you get the idea. So before we get to step one, please do stick around until the end, and I'll show you a super prompt that will help transform ChatGPT to an expert content strategist in whatever your niche is. It doesn't even matter what it is. So first, let's talk about generating seed keywords. And let's talk about what seed keywords are and why they're important. They are the foundation of your keyword research. And generally, they're the initial words or phrases that will generate more keyword ideas. And without a good set of keywords that are seed keywords, it can be difficult to come up with related and profitable keywords for your content. So to generate these seed keywords. You could use tools like Google Trends, Amazon, if you're looking for product ideas, or what I prefer, the oldest tool of all, and that's your brain. So these tools are great for finding the most popular search terms related to your industry or niche. And basically, you could enter a broad term related to your niche or like the product name, and it'll give you plenty of ideas. So like I said, I like coming up with some of these ideas, these seed keywords on my own at first. And what we can do is do an example. So let's hop over to ChatGPT. And one of my favorites is to use a camera because uh, I have a camera. I'm actually looking at it right now and I'm not very original. So we could hop over here to ChatGPT and what we'll do, I'm just going to zoom in just a touch and basically it will help us come up with a bunch of other ideas. So I'm gonna type in, I need help with keyword research topics, and I need other seed keywords related to point and shoot camera, DSLR camera, and mirrorless camera. Those are the three that I came up with out of my brain. So all of a sudden we have 15 different ideas. So camera lenses, accessories, bags, tripods, straps, settings, modes, photography tips, techniques, tutorials, lighting, and so on. There's camera brands, there's even more. So I'm just gonna say, uh, give me 10 more. So this is like a great follow-up prompt. So give me 10 more. And we already had you know, 15 like high level areas. So now we're gonna end up with 25 total. So one cool thing you can do is just go a little bit deeper into each one of these. Now that's the next section, all right? But you see, you can get some really good ideas based on just three seed keywords that I put in, and we end up with several others. So these are quite high level and can go very deep into each one of those sections. In the next step, we'll explore how to use these seed keywords to generate even more keyword ideas. The thing is, the seed keywords are pretty broad and usually very competitive, so it's hard to rank for those keywords. So let's move on to step two, which is refining those keywords a little bit. We were kind of getting into that uh, before when we were getting more detail there, but it is important to refine those keywords so that you can ensure that number one, they're relevant to your content. Number two, have a reasonable search volume. And number three, are not too competitive. Like I said, those broad terms are gonna be really hard to rank for. So if you go after something too broad, you're gonna be competing against like, Wikipedia and the biggest websites in the world, plus the searcher intent is usually not very clear if you're looking at those broad keywords. So if someone typed in DSLR camera, you don't know if they're looking for the definition of a DSLR camera 
You don't know if they're looking to buy one. You don't know if they're looking for repairs of DSLR cameras. And it's just really kind of vague. And again, a little too broad. So we can't get these related keywords based on the seed keywords. And these refinement, this refinement of the seed keywords is going to help us find keywords that we actually can write content on. So let's take a look at that. So we have the broad terms here, and we're just going to go a little bit deeper. And I'm going to, uh, let's, let's go back to the very broad section and camera lenses. So we'll say, what are good topics about camera lenses. So we're going to end up with a handful here. And we not only get sort of like a title, right, like lens sharpness, but we also get a little blurb about what we can include. And if you don't know, right, you could just at, ask ChatGPT. So would each of the 10 items be a good article topic? So it says, yes, each would be a good article topic. Here are potential titles to give you an idea. So it took the 10 ideas, which we had a little bit of information about. Now it's giving us a title for them. So here's what you would do uh, next. You could actually ask for a detailed outline about creating beautiful bokeh techniques to blur the background, right? And I have a couple other videos out there that can show you what you can do um, if you want to write the whole article, if you want to get a detailed outline and do more research along the way. So we're identifying some great keywords here. Now, another thing that you would want to do, you would have to go to another tool. So that is a little bit beyond the scope of using ChatGPT, but I talked about keyword research and search volume. So the search volume is something that is fairly important. You do need to go most likely go and check to see how many people are searching for it. There's other tools out there that you can use to check the search volume. So you can use a tool like Hrefs or SEMrush, which are sort of premium search engine marketing tools. They are fairly expensive. If you're trying to do this on a budget, those are going to be some of the most expensive tools, yet they are the most powerful. However, you can use cheaper tools. There's a very inexpensive tool called Keywords Everywhere that is a web browser extension and you could do your keyword research there. You could use a tool like KW Finder, which is uh, one of my favorites. I'm actually an affiliate for them and you can save some money and potentially get a free trial based on whatever their deal is right now. But you can check the description for, for that kind of stuff. The cool part with those tools is it gives you some idea for competition analysis and the competitiveness of certain keywords. So you understand how hard it is to rank. So once you have a list of the related keywords, you can filter them based on the search volume and competition level. And I personally like very low competition keywords with low search volumes. A little counterintuitive, but it's usually just easier for me to rank if I go after low search volume terms. And I like to use the keyword golden ratio as well, and that'll help you prioritize the lowest competition keywords. Finally, you can use ChatGPT to generate long tail keywords, which are uh, typically easier to rank for in very specific keyword phrases. These are usually far less competitive and can attract very targeted traffic to your website. So that's how you can refine your seed keywords using ChatGPT to get long tail keywords and other very low competition keywords. Now we're at the next step, which is a little bit beyond the scope of just pure keyword research, but we're thinking about creating the content. So we're not going to get into the content creation, but you can use ChatGPT to create detailed outlines. You could ask it for additional research if you want to go deeper into certain sections, and it will actually write the content for you if you want. Now, I have a couple other videos out there, which I'll link to about writing blog posts, doing research and stuff like that. And we're just going to move on from here because you could refer to those other videos. So Kind of the final step here is tracking your performance after you find the keywords, you write the content, and you publish it. So this is best done with other tools. So there are some rank tracking software out there, and you can easily sign up for those. Some of them are fairly inexpensive. One thing you probably won't find very effective is trying to track it manually and just like 
Googling a term and seeing where you come up. If you have a lot of content on your site, that's just going to take forever and be a little maddening searching through the results page. So one thing you could do is just hop over to the Google Search Console, and then you can have a look and see if you're showing up for impressions or if you're getting clicks to your website. And basically, you could sort of track along to see if you are getting traction for a given keyword or a page, URL, whatever. Typically, if your site's brand new, you're not going to see a lot of traffic in the first few months. But what you do want to see is some impressions. You want to see the impressions going up. The impressions are often a leading indicator that you're going to get more traffic in the future. So in conclusion, tracking the performance of your keywords and content is kind of an important part. It's just as important as actually publishing the content, because if you're not paying attention, you don't know if you're doing work that is paying off or if you need to refine your process a little bit more. Here's the bonus tip. You can get more tips like this by downloading the Prompt Engineering Cheat Sheet, which is 100% free. You will get super actionable prompts for productivity, content, and writing, and other really superpowers. So here's how to prompt ChatGPT to be your expert virtual assistant, no matter what your niche is. And I'm actually going to share my screen here and show you what it is exactly. So this is it, and you can get it. I'm not going to read the whole thing out, but you tell ChatGPT that I want you to act as an AI content specialist for a blogger with a niche site about your niche, right? So we just have it, your niche. All you have to do is replace your niche in brackets with whatever your niche is. Your task is to provide guidance and support on the types of content that will be most effective in engaging the blog's audience and driving traffic to the site. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there's three other paragraphs. Again, all you have to do is copy this. You take your niche in brackets, and then you put in whatever your niche is. It's going to be really damn good. And if you want to, you could actually add in more detail. So if you know that your niche has some particular uh, thing that you want to add in there, all you have to do is add a little section in here and tell ChatGPT what you want it to do. And then you will have a chat bot that you can go back to again and again. So be sure to get the prompt engineering cheat sheet. And if you dig some of these other uh, topics, you know, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel about ChatGPT.